Ben Rennick was one of the country's preeminent snake breeders. This girl, very tame. Rennick appeared at reptile shows selling his snakes to enthusiasts all over the country. That ended in June of 2017 when he was found dead at his breeding facility. I thought he'd been attacked by a snake um, because his, his skull was crushed. Um, but he was standing exactly where he always stood, right there in the facility. Sam Rennick is Ben's brother. He got the panicked call that night from Ben's wife, Lynn Lee. It wasn't until well after the police arrived and that I was told that he was actually murdered by a by a gun, by a weapon, and I, I didn't. I found that very hard to believe. I couldn't wrap my mind around it. Nobody would ever want to hurt Ben. According to police, Ben was the victim of multiple gunshot wounds, with one being a contact wound to the head. Nothing was stolen, and based on where his body was found, investigators seemed to be convinced of one thing, that the killer was known to Rennick. But Ben's murder went unsolved for more than two years, until a break. Identified only as BB in the police report, he broke the case wide open with information leading to the arrest of Ben's wife, Lynn Lee Rennick, and her ex-boyfriend, Michael Humphrey. The two are charged with first-degree murder in the death of Ben Rennick. According to the probable cause affidavit, BB told police he was having an affair with Lynn Lee while she was married to Ben. They continued to see each other after Ben died, even fathering a child with her. According to BB, Lynn Lee told him she feared Ben would divorce her over the money problems with the spa. So, with the help of ex-boyfriend Michael Humphrey, she planned to shoot Ben after a previous poisoning attempt failed to kill him. BB told police that Lynn Lee and Humphrey went to the snake farm. Lynn Lee told Ben that Humphrey was an old friend who wanted to see the snakes. After a tour, they returned to the car to retrieve a gun. BB told police Lynn Lee walked in with the gun and shot Ben multiple times. Lynn Lee and Humphrey then returned to Lynn Lee's spa business where Lynn Lee took off her clothes and took a shower, giving the clothes to Humphrey to dispose of with the gun and shell casings. It was a huge relief. We, we were happy to finally get some answers. However, of course, they were ugly. You know, hearing that she, that she attempted to poison him, all of that was new news to us. Finding out that she was having an affair was something we were completely taken, we were shocked. We couldn't have imagined that. That's not the Lindley we knew. So when it's time to try a case, you know, sometimes the, when you're a prosecutor, I'm a former prosecutor, sometimes your case is driven by the forensic evidence and, and the way you can tie people to it. Other trials are driven by the story and the motive. And I think this case really falls into that latter category, but let's find out for sure. Let's uh, bring in a special guest, investigative reporter with ABC 17 News, Lucas Geisler is with us. Lucas, great to see you. Vinny, thanks for having me here. Um, what are your thoughts about that, the way this case has, has played out? Do you, do you think the, the, what's going to happen inside that courtroom will be more about the story and the motive and the relationships here, or is it going to be focused more on uh, forensic evidence, DNA, whatever else they may have gathered here? Vinny, you are you're on to something insane on, on pointing out these two different aspects of what goes into a criminal trial. I will say that I, I kind of feel at this point, as you do, that the story of, of those parties involved in this is going to be a major part of the case, um, in that this relationship between Lindley and Ben, between Lindley and Michael Humphrey, between Lindley and this BB person, this informant to the Missouri State Highway Patrol that broke this case open, is going to be a major part of this case, not only for the prosecution, but also for the defense. In many of their relationships, um, in the sometimes rocky relationships that they find themselves in, and also the relationship between some of these people and the law is going to be a big part of this. I know for certain that Lindley's defense attorney has also claimed that there is no forensic evidence that ties Lindley to the crime scene. No DNA evidence, no recovered weapon, 
um, to at least at this point in the case, no recovered weapon by investigators that tie her to this crime. Right now, the evidence that we know of at this point, which is an important distinction to make that has been revealed to the public, is a lot of surveillance video around Lindley's spa that allegedly shows her and Michael there, and some other witness statements as well. This BB that was pointed out, who apparently says that Lindley confided in a lot of this stuff uh, it, with him, and also with an employee, uh, with employees of Lindley Spa, who apparently have told investigators things as well, and one of which apparently has an agreement with the state to testify in exchange for what is unclear at this point, but there is some agreement there. So are the, is the story and the relationships going to be a big part of it? I think undoubtedly so. The evidence, the forensic evidence, I, remains to be seen at this point. Yeah, I mean, it might be a little thin, and, and we know, you know, with CSI and forensic files and all these programs in the last couple of decades and true crime buffs out there, everyone's looking for that. But you, you, you can prosecute if you've got surveillance video, you've got some witnesses, and, and you put things together. But what, what exactly is the why here? You know, anytime you have a spousal murder, um, inevitably what's argued in court is, well, you know, just divorce. You know, she would have just divorced him if she didn't want to be with him. Why would she murder him? She could just divorce him. And, and, and so has there been any clarification uh, either way why that wouldn't have been an option? From what we understand at this point, Vinny, money is a big part of this right now. As the piece pointed out, Ben Rennick, was a world-renowned reptile breeder, had hundreds of different snakes, particularly ball pythons and anacondas. Ball pythons are big as far as uh, being able to be sold and traded uh, because, of, because of different breeding that can be done with them. Uh, very good breeders can get snakes that come out as a certain color with certain patterns. And Ben was apparently as one of the best, uh, one of the best that you'll find in the United States. And people also raved about just his customer service. He was beloved within this snake breeding community across the country. Um, money is a big part of this. From the records that I've been able to find, Ben Rennick was actually looking to get out of the business, had made a million dollar sale to a NHL goalie to sell the, his remaining assets, his snakes, uh, a million dollar sale that he was going to make. And according to the Highway Patrol, Lindley was worried that he was going to have enough money to take the ch to take their children away from her. I haven't found any divorce records or anything like that, to your point, Vinny, but there apparently was this fear that he was going to have this money and be able to take the children away from her. Um, he, that's the records that I've been able to find there. And also want to point out that Lindley did have a very public um, sort of struggle with money. Her spa in Columbia, Missouri had been under several thousand dollars in debt as well. Part of the case the patrol is making is that she, um, that Ben was feeling that she was sucking money out of the business to run this spa. Money is going to be a big motive, at least that they've established right now. All right. This is a fascinating, fascinating case. Lucas Geisler, investigative reporter, ABC 17. Thank you so much for that information. We really appreciate it. We look forward to speaking to you again. Thanks, Vinny.